Hey friends, happy Friday. Today I have a little bit of a different video to share with you. I've got three one pot meals that I think everybody should try and they were delicious. I've shared these previously in a what's for dinner, but I didn't feel like vlogging this week and I've been like accumulating like one pot meals and like crock pot meals from like some separate videos because I know some people like to just like watch one pot meals or like just crock pot meals. So I hope y'all like this video. As I said, I've got three delicious one pot meals to share with you. So let's go ahead and get into it. First up, we have creamy chicken and broccoli spinach rice. This is probably our favorite of the three, and I've already made this a couple of times. So I started off by heating some olive oil in my skillet, and then once that was hot, I added in about half of an onion and some minced garlic, and cooked that up for about five minutes till the onion got nice and tender. All of the exact measurements will be listed in the description box down below. Once my onion was tender, I added in two chicken breasts that have been chopped up into bite-sized pieces, and I seasoned that with onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, some red pepper flakes, and salt and pepper. And then I cooked that for about another five minutes. And then your chicken doesn't have to be cooked through. You just want to get it like nice and brown on the outside. It's going to continue cooking with our rice. So after about five minutes when the chicken is a nice like brown color, I'm going to add in about one and a half cups of frozen broccoli, one cup of rice, two and a half cups of broth or water, and I did water and chicken bouillon, and then I brought that to a boil. Once it came to a boil, I reduced the heat to like a medium low, covered this, and simmered it for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, your liquid should all be absorbed, your rice should be nice and tender, and then I added in some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Once that was melted, I added in some blended cottage cheese. I usually do like close to a cup of the blended cottage cheese. You do want to make sure that it's blended. You won't even notice it in there. Like it makes it creamy, but you won't notice like it being cottage cheese because I know there's a bunch of cottage cheese haters, but it just adds a really nice creaminess to it. And I have two people in my family who hate cottage cheese, but they love this dinner. Once the cottage cheese is all mixed in, then you can add in some chopped spinach. And then I just let that sit um, with the heat off for about five minutes so that spinach can wilt and this is super filling and delicious and has quickly become a family favorite. I recommend everybody try it. Next up, I have a one pot lasagna like hamburger helper skillet meal. So I'm starting off by browning one pound of ground beef with some salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. Once that was all browned up, then I drained off the excess grease. I just like to use the paper towel trick to do this, just to soak up any excess grease. You still get a little bit of grease in there for flavor, but you get most of it off. Typically, I buy pretty lean ground beef, but this one was not very lean, so I needed to drain off a lot of excess grease. And then I added in two cups of beef broth, a 24-ounce jar of marinara sauce, and I added a little bit of water to that jar to, just to make sure that I got it all out, and then eight ounces of of Mafalda pasta. And then I stirred that around, make sure everything was combined really well, and then I brought this to a boil. Once it came to a boil, I reduced the heat to a medium low and covered this and let it simmer for about 15 minutes or until that pasta was done. Um, I did stir it about halfway through just to make sure my pasta wasn't sticking to the bottom. Then once most of that liquid has been absorbed and your pasta is done, I'm going to stir in about three quarters of a cup of blended cottage cheese. I used it in the last one and then I thought it would be really good in a like lasagna pasta and so that's what made me make this and it turned out really good. We really enjoyed it. It was very much like a lasagna flavor. It was better than any like hamburger helper or 
um, any other like skillet lasagna type thing that I've ever tried. And then I stirred in about one to two cups of some shredded mozzarella. And then once the cheese is melted, this is ready to serve. I topped it with a little bit more mozzarella to serve it. And you could have a salad on the side of this or some garlic bread, but it's super delicious and very filling. The next recipe is a ground beef orzo with tomato cream sauce. So I'm starting off by browning a pound of ground beef again, and I am seasoning it up with some pepper, garlic powder, and the onion salt from Trader Joe's. Usually instead of onion powder, I'm usually using onion salt, but if you don't have onion salt, you can always just use onion powder and then add in some salt, but it's very salty, so usually I skip the salt when I use the onion salt. So and then I get my ground beef about halfway cooked through and then I'm going to add in about half of an onion and continue cooking that until the onion is soft and my beef is fully cooked. Then I stirred in some minced garlic, red pepper flakes, Italian seasoning, and my orzo. And then I continued to cook that for about a minute get the orzo a little bit toasted. Then I stirred in some tomato sauce, some water and beef bouillon powder, or you could just use beef broth in place of that, cream and Worcestershire sauce. And then I brought that to like a low like boil. We want it to continue to simmer for about 10 minutes uncovered, stirring often so that the orzo doesn't stick to the bottom and just watch it. If you have to turn down the heat a little bit, you might want to turn it down to like medium low just so it, that it continues to simmer though and your orzo can get cooked through. For me, it took about 15 minutes for my orzo to get fully cooked through and for most of that liquid to be absorbed. And then all I did was turn off the heat and then stirred in some spinach and Parmesan cheese. And then you can just cover this or just let it sit for about five minutes and your spinach will wilt and then this will be ready to eat. Again, this is a very filling dish. Not as filling as the other ones. The other ones were super filling because of that cottage cheese being added in there. It just adds a bunch more protein and it makes it a little bit more filling. But this was really delicious. We served it with some garlic bread or toast. I made some toast and put some Chef Chamois garlic butter on there and had that with it. And it was really good. All three of these meals will definitely be repeated. I've already repeated the first one, I think three times. I think I've made it three times now. And I know my family is going to ask me when I'm going to make it again because they love it that much. And so do I. All three of these meals will be repeated in my house. But I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave me a thumbs up so that I know to continue doing these. In addition to the regular what's for dinner, those will still be every Sunday. Those aren't going anywhere, but occasionally I might throw up just like three of our favorite one pot meals or three of our favorite crock pot meals. But I hope y'all have a great weekend and I will see you Sunday for the what's for dinner.